Good evening. I wrap Steen of Linden Associates with your metals market wrap up for this Monday, the 1st of February, 2021, just around 7.30 p.m. Central Time. Well, you can see we're down 50 cents in the silver, and this is a bounce. We've been down nearly a dollar an ounce already in it. The exchanges raised their margin by about 19% today. Some of the clearing firms have gone up more. I know one that went up 100% today on their margin. Uh, and they'll stay that way through tomorrow until they know where things are. And that's the difference between stocks and commodities in, in part. In the futures market, the exchange changes its margins regularly. In the stock market, you get 50% of what the value of the uh, different underlying stock is, and that can be what you're putting up for your money, and then you're borrowing the rest and paying on it. There's no interest in futures. In theory, there is one in the uh, stock market, and you, you pay that on the money that you lend. Now, what else happens is the futures market set a margin by the, uh, by the exchange, but the clearing firms can make it whatever they want. So let's assume that uh, the market in, in silver was a $13,000 margin. And let's assume tonight it's now 17,000. It went up by the exchange. I know one firm that's gonna say it's 34,000 tomorrow. They're covering their butt. It's that simple. What else can I tell you? Nothing wrong with that. They protect their client, they protect themselves. And that'll float into probably the one-tenth size contracts as well, the minis. All right. So that's what's going on. When margins go up in futures, it typically dampens price on the underlying futures market because you're forcing people out. Even if they have a position on, they have to have in their account the proper margin requirement, whatever the firm makes it. It's at the firm's discretion. The margin cannot be lower than the exchanges on an overnight position, but it can be substantially higher or right what the exchange set it at. That's their choice. Platinum went up too, gold margin went up a little bit as well. Dollar down tonight, as you can see, foreign currencies up, but the stock market, it's like a pressure release valve. It's going, okay, Oof, we're off a little bit. And if that's off, then that's another dilemma away from crude oil. The market is concerned about a number of things, but as you know, one of them is gonna be what's going on in US financial markets. The other thing is going to, of course, be what's going on with COVID and we're getting progress made every day on that. That is the important thing. Yeah, there's setbacks, but there's progress. It's the degree of setbacks. Nobody can stop a God act of uh, putting in this monster storm that Chicago had and now it's in Central Park, all right? I live downtown Chicago. I can walk to the Chicago Board of Trade where normally our office is. Obviously, we're not there in the COVID situation, however, we have 10 to 12 inches of snow here. <laughs> That's a lot. Chicago was so far behind on this year's snowfall, now we're ahead because of the storm, but that's the one out east. I understand Central Park's gonna get between 13 and 18 inches of snow, so that shuts down cities. In any case, go. When a market is under this red line, which is the 18-week moving average on a weekly chart, that defines bias. Under it, I have bearish bias. When it's over it, I have bullish bias. It's that simple. The same works on daily charts, but instead of a weekly 18-week average, I use a daily. When we take a look at the daily bar chart here, from the beginning of the year when we peaked at 1962 and came down into that 1802 level, we've bounced and just hung around this 1860 zone. Are we trending? No. What you have is a lower low and a higher high. An uptrend on a swing line will have higher lows, higher highs. You don't have it. Or in a downtrend, lower highs, lower lows. And in no trend, you will have a lower low and a higher high in some sequence. Where's the resistance? You're at it. The 18-day average, you're over it. So it's trying to keep an upside bias. Where's the next resistance point? The 200-day moving average. So the market's caught in this. Now, when we were down here, I told you, in these videos, I thought the likelihood of the market could rally back into this level of resistance. And that all came about from back here when you hit these Bollinger Bands and now you got back to those numbers. That's all that it's about. What's the importance of Bollinger Bands? You're only going to stay outside of them, the upper or the lower, 5% of the time. So when I see the market hit, be it the up or the downside, I'm teaching 
via my courses, my subscriber videos, and some of you with these freebie YouTube videos, that that's where I think pros are taking money off the table and they're jamming their stops way down. The market wants to continue fine. What do you define as jamming it down? Well, I talk about that in my subscriber video. I don't in these videos. I don't give you all the things I do here. I hope you realize that. It's by design. I want you to be a subscriber. When we take a look at what the market is doing next in the slow stochastics, momentum is up. It is overbought. I define overbought as any reading over 70 is overbought on the slow stochastic. Any reading under 30 is oversold. If both numbers were going sideways over 80 for several days, I'll call that locked in or embedded under 20 several days in a row, locked in, embedded. There's ways to trade with that. So I have an overbought market that's gotten back to the 18-day average. Should it spur forward, I'd see resistance at the 100-day average and the upper Bollinger Band, and I think it would be stiff resistance. Right here, I think the market's just playing around marking time. The gold-silver ratio has seen silver move just in the past few days from the 71.30 level down to 64.30, you do realize a year ago or so it was up in the 120s. So it's halved itself in round figures. When I take a look at SLV, the ETF, I often don't do this. I just want you to see what it's done. This is a market that came out of left field. Going home on Wednesday of last week, you had lower highs, lower lows. You would hit a downside target, the 100-day average. The market was in a downtrend, bias down. If you took out 2389, you could not be short anymore. You hit your first target, the second target was 2240. The market gapped sharply higher. You can see what it did. It uh, opened at 2453. That was over this number. That's where I think the traders came out. At the minimum, they had to because you lost your downtrend. Then the market started moving again to the upside on Friday, and today with the, all the news from uh, Reddit that was going on, the market takes off. In the futures market, we have a similar thing. So right here, lower and low, you took out this high, you went up, now you're starting to fall back. I expect this week we're gonna be under that upper Bollinger Band. The odds of staying under it, very small. In the copper market, you're in a downtrend. Support comes in right here at the lower band. We're basically a sideways market with downside bias that has hit its targets. Market is going flat in momentum. What did I prep you for last week? I said, I don't think you're gonna get a lot of new buying in copper. The fundamentals aren't there because China's holiday, the Lunar New Year is coming up, what, the 12th or so? So that is when they stop buying. And we have had what kind of market? We're seeing that they've had their own cases of COVID. We saw their manufacturing PMI come out a bit lower today. That's it, but it'll take nothing to get it bullish again. Any move over 361 and a quarter negates the downtrend and a close over that price is bullish. Looking for the upper Bollinger Band. In the platinum market, higher high, lower low, no trend at all, just meandering around and a downtrend and a good one. You can see how the market came back to the resistance right here. That was where the pros, I think, went short the market on that rally, and I think they covered on Friday. This is tonight. Uh, did I say Friday? Today. Uh, they might have covered on the big break on Friday. Certainly today is where I think they came out at the least. And in the dollar index, I have been telling traders that I think that the pros have been buying right here against the 9013 level or so with stops under 9003, looking for the upper Bollinger Band. Market even pulled back again uh, on Friday. Today lets you out. And as you can see tonight, it's backing off a bit. What I do in the mornings at 5.40 each morning, I get up, 
I've read already by four o'clock, I'm up. And I've read what's going on in Asia, Europe, and the US. I now see what the reports coming out for the US are. I'm creating for you a spreadsheet for that to go on to a video that I start recording at 5.40 a.m. I'm gonna give you shorter term swing trades and longer term trades. Longer term trades are really coming out each Saturday and I keep you up on them because I'll use the weekly charts for those. And obviously, if you look at the weekly chart, everything slows down a bit bigger risk, but the same concepts are in there and you're trying to catch those longer term trades. I'm gonna give you the news as I said. I want you to get comfortable with the news. What's affecting the markets? I'm gonna cover the markets in this exact sequence and on our website there'll be a scroll bar. You pull it, let's assume you want metals. It'll say metals, just let go, it plays. Let's assume you wanna go back to interest rates, just click it, it'll play for you. So this is how it works. To find out more, to sign up to get these, all you need to do is go to our website at www.irapstein.com under the word research. You can always call my staff. They'll get you set up in two seconds. I'm Ira. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.